and welcome again to the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the daily race seat that was on at Blue Moon Bay infield A track driving the Group 4 cars. I've decided to race again in the McGann for this race. It's one of my favourite cars at the moment. I love the way it handles. I love the way it turns into the corners. There was a few other cars that were very competitive. I think the Porsche Cayman was in the top 10 stars, which was the first I've ever seen that car in the top 10 stars for a long time, which was nice to see. So the BOP definitely getting there with that car. We're going to start this race coming from the replay cameras there you can see and we're going to check the start out as all 20 cars trying to make it through the opening lap with as clean as possible without making any errors this was my first race of the day at this track i'd just done the qualifying jumped on first race obviously is all about just trying to get consistency in terms of race pace you're never going to be fully up to speed on your first race it's just about just trying to keep it cool and trying not to make as many errors as possible you can see there in the background a lot of McGann's and obviously a lot of people picking this McGann it is such a nice car to drive you can't blame everyone for using it um, there is other cars that could have been competitive here however what I found out I mean, after this race I've now found out that McGann has quite good fuel saving ability as well as its ability obviously f for like twisty tracks it's not so brilliant down the straights we know that so Monza tracks like that is not going to be the best but for tracks like this you can see the rear end stepping out there where I'm getting on the power obviously I don't run any traction control with this car no no assist nothing uh, except for ABS and default setting that's how I like to drive this car I love the feeling you get from this car I've heard a lot of people say they struggle with the balance in terms of the rotation of the car and on the power and the traction loss I don't experience any of that with this car. It must be just the way it handles suits my style. I feel like it's got plenty of grip and really easy to drive. As you can see there, a lot of cars trying to break the slipstream in the background. I've managed to hold on to P1 through the opening lap. P2 getting very close into turn one. Obviously, he attacked the a, the entry a lot harder than what I did. Then I went from clearer, cleaner apex and mid apex speed that gives me better exit speed as you can see there but again he's getting very close slipstream obviously very strong on this track because of the long straight as long as you're within seven eight tenths of that slipstream you're going to be picking up a massive toe along that back straight as you see there having to go a little bit defensive under the bridge break nice and you know normal place and one of the cars i don't know if it was p3 but he completely missed his braking and whacked into the back of my car and really frustrated me that because he obviously wasn't paying attention to his braking zones. I know it's only an error, but I pick up a penalty. Again, a one-second penalty. It's slightly over one. I think it's, it's dead on one second here. One-second penalty. He got a penalty as well. I think it was a three-second penalty, maybe a five. And a little bit annoyed because I, I, I just on the defensive line and someone's just missed their braking and clean gone into the back of my car. So I've got to try and go defensive down this straight. I can see he's going to go down that right-hand side. So I need to start working my way back over to the right hand side to give myself the entry line but I don't mind taking this line you saw the track guide I did I don't mind taking this low down line this is how I prefer to take this corner anyway but he manages to go around the outside and just cuts across me and that panicked me a bit I had to it, it kind of made me come off the normal line that I was going to take because I thought I was going to hit him and um, just about got away with that and then P3 managed to get through me through the inside as well where obviously I've had to lift and lost a lot of time there so a little bit frustrating and then P2 some just lifts or makes realizes he's not going to make the apex of the corner and i had to get out of that big time in the middle of the apex of the corner luckily i did it without hitting him um, just about avoided him and it was a very close call that was a you know i could have picked up a 10 second penalty there um, through not really my fault it was just a p2 just had to lift i think he was running a little bit of understeer through the angle he took through the corner and i had to get out of it so from p1 down to p3 so not the best start so far in this race a little bit disappointed but it's my first race for the, for the day at this track and it was just a case of trying getting used to the strategy i wasn't aware of what anyone's strategies would be in this first race i had no idea i had no idea what i was going to run i was driving quite aggressively so i had thought about the possibility of not pitting in this race but i decided that i wanted to drive reasonably aggressive and just see what the tyres were like. There was a, I had an idea of my, in my head about possibly not pit, not changing tyres in the pit stop because I, I knew how grippy this car is, and I knew that the tyres are fairly good in this car. I remember at Suzuka, the tyres were wore very nicely, and they, you know, I know it was on low tyre wear, but you could still tell that the tyres had a lot of grip no matter what stage of life they were in. So that was the idea for this race, just to not be too worried about going down to P3. Because I thought if other people are changing tyres, then I might be able to get some of these positions back. You 
can see there now riding on board with P2 looking back at myself as I'm trying to hold on to the slipstream and obviously I wasn't trying to be too aggressive for my drive in this stage so doing a little bit of short shifting just so that I've got a little bit of fuel extra as well that I don't need to put in when I go into the pit stop phase. P2 running very close to the wall there you can see the sparks flying. I was given a lot of space at this you know my first race I wasn't really pushing to, on the opening four or five laps I didn't want to push that hard that I started making errors so being reasonably respectful not getting too close to the walls just trying to keep consistency you know first race of the day said it before there's no need to be driving 100 percent aggressive as you can see there p2 got very close to p1 going through the apex of that corner and i'm just holding back at this stage thinking something could happen here i'm not really going to get involved with that i'll just make sure there's a little bit of a gap in front of myself you can see there going through these corners just leaving a car's gap and again you can see them breaking so i, I decided to get really close to this point and see if I can make a move but I realized there was no move on there and um, no point diving down the inside so just breaking nice and early again taking a nice clean apex there's no point lunging into these corners and you know ruining two people's races um, it's not worth it so just take my time looking for an opportunity and I wanted to make sure the opportunity was safe because they were so close up ahead I was also very aware at this stage that someone could make an error you know someone could come into contact so I just wanted to be very careful at this stage and again P2 pushing too hard, hits that wall on the outside and again I was being fairly cautious and you can see again it's gaining on that slip, you can see in that top camera looking back at myself gaining on that slip stream. but again you can see what I decided to do in this stage is short shift, not worry about overtaking, I thought I'll just use this opportunity while I'm in the slip stream. there's no need to panic, I'll just save some fuel and even going into fuel mixture too briefly just to try and save a bit of fuel and went really aggressively into that corner but I tend to like doing a, di a different way to a lot of people on that corner I don't know if it's probably the best way but I d if I run up high too high sometimes it affects when I hit that bump you can see it actually affected me on that lap but a lot of people do it there's so many different lines that people take through some of these corners on this track it's actually quite good to watch you can see going through these next few corners a lot of people take varying lines go through this corner and then the next two left hand corners where some people like to take it really tight some people like to take a wide entry and you can see there the great camera angles you can see all the cars after you know six laps are very close together showing you what this you know competitive matchmaking does you know i talked about on the f1 video i did earlier today it shows you what it does on any racing game you know this is the racing you get involved with if you've got a, a competitive matchmaking system and this is why i love gt sport you know close racing every single race you get in it's brilliant and you can see their leaders having a, another battle you can see again i wasn't really too worried about pushing too hard at this stage you could see i was doing a bit of you know i wasn't over revving the car also i was trying to get into sixth gear as much as possible normally in my qualifying lap i'd stay in fifth gear there and just let it rev out but you know changing in sixth gear might not be a massive amount of fuel i'm saving but every little bit helps in terms of your pit stop as you can see there the top two get very you know feisty with each other it looks like p2 is having a little look at you can see it building up and i'm just holding back waiting for something to happen there was bound to be some sort of contact or something happen as you can see there p2 has actually picked up a penalty and that is kind of what i was expecting to happen and now i'm into p2 and he's pretty much out the slipstream also which is fairly good because now i'm not going to be hassled by him in terms of you know having to drive defensive he's too far back and now i can just try and get as close or stay with p1 as much as possible i was very aware that i was going for the strategy though i was in you know it was in my head that i wasn't gonna bother changing these tires i felt like the car was still driving reasonably well there was plenty of grip in the car so my choice at this stage was to just keep driving reasonably fast but i didn't want to take all the tire life out of the, these tires i could see the right hand side picking up a lot more wear mainly because of the first corner and obviously the last corner where you're pushing really hard and the right tires are taking a lot of punishment so i had to be fairly cautious as we jump through now to lap 10 just before p1 is going to go in the pits you can see there i've still got 2.1 laps of um, fuel left so 17 percent of fuel and now p1 is going to dive off into the pits you can see there he's going in the pits and this was really interesting i didn't know whether he was going to run the same strategy as me because he's only got four percent fuel left i've got 17 well at the point he went in the pit 16 percent fuel so managed to save a lot more fuel than but only 1.5 seconds behind so the plan's going really well at the moment if he changes tires it's going to be even better because my car's still driving really really nice you know we're on lap 11 i'm in p1 now i've got another driver behind me who's he's around six seconds behind me now this driver that's behind me 
is on another different strategy. He is on a no-stop strategy, which I did not really expect anyone to be doing, but it's clear that it, it is possible to do. And at this stage, I didn't really have any idea about what sort of time it was going to take me in the pits to change the tyres and you know, if, if you were going to not change the tyres and just do the fuel, I had no idea. So this is kind of a learning race, I wanted to know how long it takes. I expected it to be fairly fast because I know last time I raced in this track, the pit stop was really fast. It, something I think they need to have a little look on is the pit, pit, this, the pit loss that you get. It seems very small, you know, considering these are supposed to have pit limiters on the, down the pit lane, you seem to be getting in the pits and out pits very fast. It seems a little bit too fast for my liking, as you can see there straight into the pits there and you can see there six seconds ahead 6.3 seconds ahead i was as the car straight in the pits you can see there's no way my car would be that quick into the pits going down a 60 mile an hour speed limit but that's how it is on gt sport as so i come out of the pits and you can see there p2 has actually got past me but luckily for myself i'm very close to the slipstream and i've obviously got a little bit more fuel than, than him but the only thing is his tires will be in better condition because He's obviously been doing a lot of fuel saving. His tyres wouldn't have took the punishment that mine did in the early stages. I didn't change the tyres, obviously. So I've come out on P2 and I've got very close to P1, but now I've got the fuel to really push and try and drive reasonably aggressive. So this is going to be a case of getting back in his slipstream and trying to make a move some way, as you can see. Looking from the TV replay camera, you can see how visually close it is. P3, reasonably close to myself, but I was reasonably happy with you know, another driver behind me because I've got the fuel to cover that off. I felt like these drivers have got to be doing fuel saving, so they're not really going to be able to make any attack attacking moves. As you can see there, I got really close again, coming onto the back straight. I'm very close to getting a pick up a very strong slipstream in this phase of the race. You can see there, pushing really hard against the wall, trying to get as close as I can. I need to get as close as possible. You can see sparks flying off that McGann going through the corner there, which was really strange on the front of the car. That was really strange to see. I don't know if that was a replay glitch or what, but very strange. As you can see there, picking up the slipstream, looking to make a move. Going to have a little look on the inside, and again, down the inside and you can see I've managed to make that move now I've got to try and hold a tight line on the apex and try and make this move a little bit of contact as I run a little bit wide but it's not enough contact to cause any penalties or any um, you know he didn't lose any much time and I managed to get that P1 and I'm back in the lead so a nice move there a little, tiny bit of contact but it wasn't enough to obscure him offline and it wasn't deliberate it's obviously just where the tracks running out of track and we both come into a bit of contact as you can see there now he's now picking up my slipstream so this is going to be the hard part is to maintain this lead all the way to the end whilst i've got slightly worse tires but i've obviously got the, the fuel to cover them off so i was reasonably happy that you know i should be able to do this as long as I, i'm obviously getting on the on the power nice and early and then i can afford to rev it fairly you know reasonably comfortable at the pit stop i did on the fuel very slightly but I should still have more fuel than what he has behind me. So I've just got to try and push reasonably hard and try and just cover any moves that he makes by going defensive. I felt like if I go defensive, I should be able to cover him off. See, so going down the left-hand side, making sure he's not going to think about going down that left. He goes down the right-hand side. You can see on the screen now, on the replay camera, he's going to have a little look down that right-hand side. I'm going to cover the inside, but you can see I've got the speed to cover him off. So without the slipstream, he's not able to really drive too aggressive. And I carry reasonably good speed all the way on a wide line, give him space, but now I'm able to power out of that corner with the extra fuel I've got and still hold that P1 position. So this is why the strategy is working. I've got the fuel to cover him off. I had the fuel to overtake him. Now I've just got to try and defend for these final two laps as we come into the final two laps of this race. And you can see that he's very close again, coming through to the end of lap, the fo lap 14. And you can see there P3 and 4. I've got P3 who looks like the driver who was in the lead. Obviously he's going to have the fresh tyres on but he's not really getting through this traffic fast enough and he's going to have really, he's pretty much not really going to be in a position to get close to myself coming into the final lap as you can see there going through this corner pushing really hard trying to make sure that he can't make a move going down this straight again just to make sure that I can defend somehow you can see I push really hard he's pushing really hard he's picking up that slipstream in P2 you can see P3 also picking up the slipstream maybe slightly there obviously he's got them fresh tyres on so he's going to be a little bit faster every lap I go very defensive on the left hand side again because i felt like i can cover that inside with the extra fuel i've got once he's out the slipstream you can see the gap is very close i decide to break very early and just try and hold a very tight apex you can see p2 was trying to do the undercut but he's not able to do it his tires obviously starting to wear out a bit as well like mine 
and I've got the fuel to make sure that he can't make that move. So again, trying to keep it smooth now on lap 15. This is the final lap of this race. It's an ex extremely close battle. You can see there, I've got to take that one second penalty, but I really didn't care about that. I, I know that at the end of the results, you know, he's gonna probably get the win because he hasn't got a penalty, but I just wanted to get to the finishing line first. It was more of a moral victory because the penalty wasn't my fault. You know, I've picked up a penalty and this again shows you why they really do need to look at fixing this penalty system. Because if this if this was an FIA race and you know coming into the final lap I had a one second penalty through something that wasn't my fault and you know an important FIA race, you know, this is an official this is gonna be an official season starting soon. If this would have been an FIA race in this situation, we would have been more annoyed. But obviously for these daily races I didn't care. I just wanted to get over the finishing line first. As you can see there, I'm not really I wasn't gonna start breaking as well before the finishing line because it was too risky with how close P2 was behind me. I didn't want him to pile into the rear of my car because the ghost doesn't quick enough so unfortunately end up p2 but i felt like the more i managed to get the moral victory of a p1 in my first race when i wasn't really aware of what strategy to go on now there was a second race i did do um i tried to do the in my second race i tried to do a different strategy this is the race three that i did the third race of the day but race two tried to i think myself and the p1 driver who started p1 in this race tried to do a no sub strategy but we tried it so late i think it was lap six or seven we decided to go on it so we had to go on massive fuel save and i actually ran out of fuel before the end of the race and then into the race three i decided to not go for that strategy although that strategy probably was very close and probably a little bit stronger it was very risky that you had faster drivers approaching behind and trying to overtake you and you risk getting penalties you risk getting involved with situations that you don't like you know i learned from Bathurst. it's not always the best situation to be in although it might be the fastest not always the best so this race i was again going to go on to the strategy that i did in the race you've just seen then and not obviously the race the strategy i did in race two so straight away Again, the revving at the start of the race. Look what it's got me there. It's managed to get me very close to P1. It only happens sometimes, but sometimes it does it and you get a really good start. However, I go into the corner a little bit too aggressive. You can see I had to give it a little lift on the exit and P1 gets the undercut again. So this was frustrating because if I could have got into that P1 straight away, it would have been ideal in terms of the strategy that I was on. I wasn't sure how P1 was going to run this race because in the, in the race two that we had, he also was pretty much mimicking my strategy in terms of we started off aggressive and then we kind of changed strategies a little bit too late and we got very low on fuel and it was really close race and there was a lot of swapping about we kind of worked as a team down the straights wasn't challenging each other we were just letting each other slip through past each other because we kind of probably both knew that we had to do this to maintain any sort of position in the race but unfortunately i ran out of fuel at the i think on the back straight managed p3 still but this race we obviously have a clear idea of what strategy we're going to go on looking at the way he was driving here straight away and kind of he gets a little bit of lag there but you can see down the straight he didn't seem to have much speed so i felt like he was trying to get me to go past him because he wanted to do some fuel saving behind me it looks like he wanted to go on a similar strategy to what we were doing midway point in the previous race but i wasn't going for that strategy i wasn't going to play ball in this race i wanted to go aggressive and push reasonably hard whilst still trying to create some you know life in these ties so you can see they're getting very close to the walls and now i'm in p1 i've made that move count obviously and i need to try and drive reasonably aggressive and not only is this going to be good for myself it's going to push p2 if, he, if he's not really sure what strategy he's on if he's going for the one stopper it's going to make him use a little bit more fuel i wasn't sure at this stage whether he was going to go on the same strategy as me it is very possible that he was on the same strategy as me because he's pushing reasonably hard at this stage obviously both very close going through these corners and i need to really be aggressive to try and build up a bit of a gap you can see by the way my car is moving you know the movements of the car you can see you can always tell when a car is pushing because of the way it takes corners and the lines you know using all the width of the track getting so close to the wall there as i go through the corner but leaving plenty of space on the right hand side so i managed to do that corner really well and pushing really hard again as you can see there p2 just about in the slipstream you can see visually i've got a little bit of a cushion now going into turn one but he's going to pick that slipstream up all the way down the straight now as we enter into turn one and i really need to start building this gap up because i need to break that slipstream so that if he's on the same strategy as me, he's obviously got to push a little bit harder and use more fuel. But if he's not on the same strategy as me and he's going for the one stopper, I need to get away from him so that he's not one saving fuel and obviously gonna have more at the end of the race. And two, that he's obviously, you know, if he if he's in my slip stream, there's no way my strategy is gonna work at all. So you can see I've managed to get out of that slip stream 1.1 seconds, 
you know, pretty much took me one lap to do it and I've done it now, 1.2 seconds. So now I need to just keep consistency. At this stage, I'm not too sure whether P2 was, what plan he was going on for this race. I don't know if he was on the same strategy as me or whether he's decides to change strategy mid-race. I really don't know what happened, you know, what he decides to do. As you can see there, P3 is the driver that got was going for the strategy of following similar strategy to myself. However, he was changing tyres at the pit stop phase, which was really the wrong strategy. You know, a pit stop, changing the tyres to cost you about four or five seconds. Now, if, you, if you're going on strategy where, where, I was, where I was in, where he was pitting at lap like nine or 10, it doesn't make sense to do that strategy because if you're going to go on the tyre change strategy you need to pit about lap 7 or 8 and get the benefit from the fresh tyres but he was going quite long on me and didn't really make much sense in the way he was doing it but uh, maybe he just didn't think of doing the you know not changing the tyres I, I straight away thought of it because it's quite a good idea it saves you five seconds in the pits this is a short lap so you're not going to lose a second the lap so that's why i was going for that strategy you can see there visually managed to build up the lead fair a fair amount at this stage and trying to really push him really hard and trying to get him as much out of my slipstream as you know away from my slipstream as possible because if i make a mistake i don't want him picking it up and also i need to be pushing him so that if he is on this on the one-stop strategy he's using more fuel than what he would like you can see there p3 also getting very close to p2 now and p3 is the guy who 100% is on the strategy of pitting and refueling. So this is kind of good for myself because the more pressure P3 can put on P2, the better because that's when your know, stuff can start happening, battling can happen and he can lose more spe more time. As you can see there, coming down the final straight and going over the line to complete another lap. And again, this race is very close. You can see in the distance, everyone is pushing really hard. I'm trying to push really, really hard. Yeah, really hard, but while maintaining some tire life. And it's so important, you know, you can drive 100% aggressive. I could have probably pushed the lap times if I really wanted to, very close to um, one minute 11.9s and stuff. But there was, it was. If you do that, you're going to start taking a lot of life out of your tyres. So you can see my lap times are 12.4, 12.5, 12.2. consistent racing as we're coming now on lap five. You can see the gap is about 1.5, 1.6 seconds, something like that. And it's it's looking fairly okay at this stage. Obviously, I want to build that lead up more. But obviously the further we go on the race, the more fuel saving Peter is going to have to do if he's on the fuel saving strategy. But although at this stage of the race, I wasn't 100% sure whether he was on that strategy or not. You can see it's around 1.3, 1.4 seconds a gap. Trying to make sure I get a solid exit from the corner. The speed that he had at this stage of the race made me think that he was on the same strategy as I was. Um, it was looking like it could have been that way. He seemed to be pushing reasonably hard. You can see there P3 also pushing really hard you know we know that he's on that strategy the same strategy as myself but he seems to change tires i wasn't sure if he would do the same strategy as me in this race though because he really wouldn't know where, what strategy i was on because of where i was coming out on the track you know he might have thought i was not pitting the way he was doing his strategy it's not 100 i'm not 100 percent sure what he probably would have thought was going on as you can see there 1.7 seconds i've got the gap up to so gained another little bit of maybe two three temps on that lap it's not massive gains it's just slight gains i'm gaining every now and you see it's very close to two seconds now coming to the midway point on lap six and that's what i've got to do i've got to keep building this gap up and try and get it up as high as possible as we're now going to skip through to the end of lap seven as you can see there p2 had made an error and this is what i think i think he made an error and then p3 had dived into the position and maybe there's some contact and he's all the way down in p5 now at the end of lap seven and i think this is where p2 might have changed his strategy and gone for the you know after losing a few seconds i think he decided to go for the, the no stop strategy so he may be of change strategies mid race because i felt like he was f fast enough um to be doing the same similar strategy to myself maybe a bit too fast to be doing a no stop because if you've got to save some fuel he was putting up some reasonably good lap times i know he is a very fast driver anyway so it's hard to tell because i raced him at um, dragon trail when it was in the, in the bugatti veyron he was very fast there so it's really hard to work out what strategy he was on as you can see there p2 2.5 seconds behind me now this is the guy that was in the lead on the first race that was obviously just pushing a little bit too hard and he used up more fuel than i did as you can see there maintaining this gap to about 2.5 seconds this time so everything's looking really good at this stage i've just got to remember that for the people that there was obviously drivers that weren't pitting and i knew at this stage that p5 the guy who was behind me might not be doing 
the strategy that I'm on and might be going for the no pit stop strategy. So I've got to try and keep pushing, but trying to save them tyres as well. So again, this is a really, um, it's kind of a complicated race because you've got to be aware of what so many different drivers are doing, what other people might be doing. You know, it could be in P3, 4, 5, because if someone's four seconds behind you but they're not showing four seconds behind you, you've got to be aware of what strategy they could be going on and that's why it's always important to keep pushing as we now jump through to the end of lap nine and p2 is going to dive on the dive off into the pits you can see there we're going to have a little look at his fuel level you can see he was on 16 percent fuel and again i've managed to save more fuel than him i'm on 24 percent so again the driving's been reasonably consistent and fast and i've managed to save more fuel however now we've got the real battle because we've got p2 who is clearly on the on a no stop strategy he looks like he's started going on a different strategy maybe he, he changed midway again i'm not too sure how he planned to do it whether he was always on the one stop strategy but he's six seconds behind and i was fully aware from the first race that i did that i needed to get that gap as close to seven seconds as possible because when the guy before in the first race we went in the pits around six seconds we came out behind him and this guy who's behind me this time is a little bit faster he's a faster driver i did not want him you know I didn't want to have to overtake him because it would be a lot harder I felt to overtake this guy than it would have been the previous guy as you can see there coming onto the back straight pushing reasonably hard I've got two laps to do this and build this gap up so you can see that I was fully aware of it I could see the fuel as I'm going over the line I could see that I should be able to get two laps it might just be one but it might be two obviously with the short shifting that I can do so I've got to try and get this gap from 5.96 seconds to around seven seconds in these two laps so you're gonna see i'm gonna to have to start driving a little bit more aggressively obviously the tires are still not great p2 is obviously going to start having to do a little bit more fuel saving so it's going to be really interesting how close this is going to be after the pit stop phase you can see there managing to get in a tenth here and there but then he's pulling it back it's really close it's just a matter of where where he, he might be saving fuel is where i'm possibly going to gain that vital little bit of time as you can see there pushing really hard for the corner you can visually see I know what I've got to do and I'm trying to push hard. You can see I've got gained about three temps there. I'm up to 6.3 seconds. So we're getting very close to that, that benchmark time that I need after pitting to come out in the lead. You can see it's up to 6.5, 6. Point, then it goes down to 6.3 again. It's such a close battle this. This is this was really tense, I have to say. I knew that I had to keep pushing and I knew I needed to get into the when I go in the pits I needed that gap to be about seven seconds. Obviously the fuel obviously the usage of the fuel as well as might be slightly different so the pit stop might be slightly shorter or longer you can see as i go over the line at the end of lap 11 11 it's 6.4 6.5 seconds so i've gained half a second on that lap so i've got to do the same thing again on this lap and gain another half a second it's really important to do as you can see there at this stage if i was to go on the pits on that lap I would have probably come out slightly behind p2 and i didn't want that i wanted to come out in the lead by around half a second because i didn't want him being really close to me and picking up the slip stream massively so it was just going to be a really close battle and it, it was really quite tense this is a different type of tense you know in racing you get you get the battling which is like on the screen you can see people racing but this is a battle of pits as you can see i've managed to get the gap up to 7.1 seconds and this is the ideal pretty much what i needed to do i needed around seven seconds as i enter the pits to be in the lead so that when i come out i've got a chance of being in the lead this is going to be extremely close still obviously the driver behind me a very fast driver you can see different lines that we take you can see how the delta changes because we both take very different lines through certain corners and it, it, it just changes purely because of entry and exit speeds are different and varying and overall it's not that much difference but it's just different approaches to the corners as you can see there going into pits gained another half a second just over half a second 7 7.1 seconds as i go in the pits i've got one percent fuel left this time obviously i think i pitted a little bit later on this go than i did on the previous go so now i need to fill up and get back out as soon as possible you can see we're going to drive on board now with p2 as you can see there i've come out of the pits just about in the lead and now i need to get onto that inside line and get on the power as early as possible because i didn't want him getting too close to my slipstream you can visually see he's around six seven tenths behind me six tenths behind me and that is reasonably comfortable because i now know that i've got the fuel although my tires will again be slightly more worn but his tires will also be worn as well but just not quite as bad as mine 
because obviously if you're using different mixtures, if you're short shifting, your tyres stay in better condition. But now I should have the fuel advantage in terms of straight line speed. So I've got to try and get out, get out of this slipstream, get him out of the slipstream, because that's where he's going to be able to hold on to me and save obviously the fuel and maybe make a last lap, you know, attack on myself. There's only a few laps left obviously in this race. So I've got to push really hard now and try and break that slipstream as you can see pretty much straight away it looks like i'm very close to being out that one second that vital one second distance as i really went aggressive on the outlap i knew i had to do it and i knew i needed to do it to get the win again and then um, obviously the first race i got the win but it took off me by that penalty i keep forgetting about that as you can see there on the replay cameras you can see in the distance P p3 and p4 fairly close but there's enough of a gap now for myself to get fairly you know this is going to be either a p1 or p2 in this race it's going to be very close this is again showing why i i, I really love gt sport because you know some tracks you've got to bear in mind you know, when you're thinking about strategy in terms of tires whether to change tires you've got to one work out are the tires going to be in good condition at the end two is the pit lane you know a, a big loss or a short loss if it's a big loss you need to think about doing the no sub strategy but if it's a fairly short loss like this track you and you've got good grip you can always go for the strategy that i'm on where you don't change the tires not enough people seem to do this i think in my race it was only myself uh, that i seen visually obviously in the top 10 that did this no one else was doing it i did tell that uh, p2 that's what i did in this race so i'm guessing in the next race he probably would have gone on the same strategy i didn't do a race after this this was my third race and then i obviously had to get recording all the footage so I, at this stage you can see there lap 14 coming through to the final lap and you can see there i've managed to build that lead up to a comfortable 1.4 seconds so this is really paid off obviously getting out that pit lane and deciding to wait before i pitted to keep building that gap up was vital you know if i would have come out behind them this could have been a different race but luckily i managed to build that gap up to the vital seven seconds and you know, used every little bit of fuel. I went in the pits with 1% fuel and I had to do that. It was the only option I had and it really did pay off and got me into a really solid position in this lap. And you can see now, 1.7 seconds been lead. So at this stage I decide it's time to just pretty much, you can see that I ran, ran really wide on that corner and that is pretty much the corner that made me think I do need to calm down a bit because I don't want to lose it on these last few corners. But I don't like calling off massively because I find that if you do do that, you sometimes make stupid errors so you can see there just trying to keep it solid trying to keep consistency through these corners obviously don't want to ma make a massive risk on the final corner just want to make sure i get it get through this corner without you know any massive incidents you see there pushing reasonably hard getting fairly close to the wall but nothing too aggressive as the gap is now 1.5 seconds as i'm driving down the straight for the final time and it looks like it's going to be another victory and this time i've got no penalties to take off so really happy with that performance pretty much run the perfect strategy and um, you know going on that no stop strategy was really risky you see there p2 had to take some penalties as well at the end so it shows you you know if you run that no stop strategy you you get risk getting penalties and stuff so really happy with my strategy take the win and that's another victory that I, i'm really happy about so i hope you enjoyed them races i know i thoroughly enjoyed both races there was obviously another race that i could have uploaded but I just didn't have the time to do you know another video another set of races as well it would have probably took me about another four hours to edit so i hope you enjoyed this i'm gonna be back with more videos again tomorrow obviously on gt sport if you haven't already subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscription and also click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos i do upload every single day on gt sport and also remember hit that thumbs up button if you have enjoyed this video i do i, I love it when everyone clicks that button i can see everyone's enjoying these videos so thanks again for watching everyone